Welcome back to Pete's Dugout. This is episode number two of my realistic career mobile Coventry City. We are back. Uh, so just a reminder of episode one as we kickstarted the season with a 2-0 victory over Bristol City before dropping two points in a very entertaining draw to Borough. So we get things started today with some Carabao Cup action against League 2 opposition. Yes, it's uh, Gillingham who travelled to the CBS Arena in what should be a routine win for the championship side. But you never know, and as we see Tatsu warming up there, how devastating was that injury against Preston? Uh, really didn't look good at all. Um, obviously, there's a lot of speculation around what the injury is um, at this point. Um, I'm recording this gameplay just as uh, Coventry are starting their game against Maidstone. Um, so obviously, we don't know what the injury is, but it doesn't look great at all. It looks quite worrying, to be fair, and a lot of fans are worried as well. Um, so really tough one to take as the Sky Blues were putting together a really good run of form before that injury and that disappointing result as well. So uh, it's a rotated side today with Tavares up top and 21-year-old Lusaka who gets the nod at right back as well. And like I said, I'm recording this as Coventry are now 3-0 up against Maidstone in the FA Cup. Um, Ellis Sims with the first half hat trick and um, one of his celebrations as well. He got out the shirt for Tatsu, so that was lovely to see. So... Um, Obviously, Coventry now one foot in the quarterfinal. Amazing to see. Um, and hopefully we can create uh, that same kind of form with Sims today. But one thing I did want to talk about on this episode is my fixtures to start the season. So I didn't actually realise this when I started this career mode, but my first few games are crazy difficult. Um, obviously, we started with games against Bristol City and Borough, which wasn't the easiest. But today we also meet Preston away and Norwich at home before travelling away again to Stoke in episode 3. So, really tough way to start the season and fingers crossed we can uh, get a decent amount of points on the board to start the season. Um, the one thing I was worried about though is squad rotation and fitness um, because in the Championship you obviously play 46 games uh, and that's just in the league alone. So, without taking into account any cup games, any cup runs. I obviously, I want to do well in the cups, um, but... We're just going to have to see how we go with um, how the squad fitness is going because obviously my priority is the league. So we pick things up in the second half, 1-1, not playing well at all. And things would go from bad to worse as Gillingham would take a shock lead at the CBS Arena. We would almost get a, a very quick response, two headed chances, both uh, both cleared and, and saved. Um, but I, I knew not to panic, you know, um, we're playing against... League 2 opposition, no disrespect to Gillingham, but we had to keep our composure. We knew the chances would come as Tavares plays in Torp and gets forward, and it's another good save from the keeper. But from the resulting corner, uh, Sakamoto plays it in, and Lats gets up and towers a header in to make it 2-2, uh, all square on the day. And th this is exactly what it meant. I knew that the chances would keep coming. Um, and from this point forward, it was all Coventry. Um, so as we get forward again through Hadji Wright, two quick goals, 3-2, game turned on its head, and that should be that. Um, obviously, you know, this is not the way we want to do things. It's not a great form. Um, we we want to be able to, um, you know, kill these games off early, rest our big players, because there's a very big schedule. So um, not the way we wanted to do things. We've obviously done it the hard way. Um, but eventually we've got there. So as the ball bounces around there, it's a little bit of pinball. We work it back to Liam Kelly and it's that man again. Curls in a beauty to make it 4-2. I'm not too sure about the celebrations. It's a bit OTT <laughs> as I come flying in to celebrate with the players. Um, but that is that. It's 4-2 on the day. We get the job done eventually. It's not the most uh, amazing bit of, uh, bit of football, um, but job done. So next up, it's Preston away, and as I mentioned a little earlier in the episode, uh, Preston really humbled Coventry last week, and uh, obviously in real life, uh, they were three 0 up at half time, and that is that's how the game would finish as well. Um, so really hoping that's not the case here today. Um, but it's back to the start in eleven for us, and it was a really positive start from Coventry. You know, a, a quick early chance that was saved, uh, but Preston had an early chance themselves as well with Collins making an early save. And I have to admit, this was a really, really strange game. So, uh, 17 minutes in here, um, it was really sort of back and forth. Not too many chances except for this one. Another great save from Collins as Will Keane heads, heads, uh, heads at goal. But like I said, yeah, have you ever had those games? It just really, really strange. So, no one's really on top or anything like that. No one's dominating the game, but chances either side and you really just 
don't know how this one's going to go. But we get forward with O'Hare and it's another, another good chance there. One team really should be in the lead, at least with so many chances. There's another chance goes begging for Coventry. But one more corner gets played in. It's another header and another save. The goalkeeper's really earning their paychecks. Um, so at half time, it's nil-nil. And it was more of the same. Really, really strange game. So um, second half, obviously, we're in the 90, 91st minute here, right at the end of the game. And another save from Collins. Um, so final chance for Preston. One more corner. And there he is again. It's Collins. So another half chance, I would say, would, you'd be expecting the keeper to make a save there. But that's how the game would end. So it's nil-nil. Really surprising, to be honest with you, considering the chances in the first half. Um, but it was just one of those games. Um, but after the after this one, I did decide to change our tactical vision. Um, as I mentioned back in episode one, I really like to play um, with wide wingers, overlapping fullbacks. So um, I've decided to give the um, the wing play um, tactical vision a go just to see how that changes anything, if at all. Um, and I'll let you know how I get on with that one. Um, but for the final episode of the game, we are back at home um, against Norwich City, who currently sit top of the table as I showed there. Um, so really expecting a tough game here. So I did make a change to the starting eleven for this one with uh, Bidwell coming in to replace Jada Silva. And he almost bagged himself an assist early on with a low cross to Sims, whose diving header across goal is saved. But the ball would eventually find its way back to Bidwell. He swings in another beautiful cross and this time Callum is there to head home and give us the early lead. And don't you just absolutely love it when that happens. You make a tactical change before a game and then that player either gets a goal or an assist. It's just oh, such an amazing feeling. 1-0 Coventry. I knew one goal wasn't going to be enough in this game. Uh, Norwich are top of the table for a reason and they have some dangerous attackers. So we had to keep pressing on and searching for a second goal. And we did almost get one as well through Hadji, who forces a really good stop from the keeper. And we had been on top all of the first 20 minutes, to be fair, but I knew that Norwich would have their chances. Uh, they're able to break down the right-hand side after a good passage of play. Um, and they really exposed our defence and the ball is played over the top and Sara is there to head home and make it 1-1. We really should have done better there to be honest. I was too careful with my tackling and uh, not wanting to give away a penalty and I was punished for it. And the Norwich goal really gave them confidence and it blew the game wide open as Sargent forces a good start from Collins there. Uh, we had a few chances of our own before the break as well. Uh, Van Ivak, um, his cross is deflected and Ellis Sims' powerful effort is deflected behind for a corner. And from that resulting corner from Eccles, Hadji Wright gets up and his headed effort hits the bar. And after a few acrobatic efforts and a few uh, headers around everywhere, it is eventually cleared. So a uh, very frenetic end to the half, but it is 1-1 at the break. So second half action then and it's Norwich who started brighter. They play the ball around our box patiently waiting for an opening and they would get one as well. And this really annoyed me because they play an inch perfect reverse pass through my defence and there's absolutely nothing I can do about that. So Sarah gets a brace and Norwich take the lead 2-1. I shouldn't be surprised by the AI on ultimate at this point but sometimes you know that, that pass was just ridiculous. But no time for complaining though we need to pick ourselves up and go again. I hate it when players say that, but there we go. But anyway, we get ourselves going again down the left-hand side. Hadji does brilliantly to hold up play. Passes to Bidwell. He plays in Sims, and the keeper is equal to his right-footed effort. But from the resulting corner, Eccle swings in another beauty, and Hadji is there again. I've already lost count of how many goals we've scored from corners this year, and I'm sure Hadji's got quite a few of them as well. 2-2. And the game really turned after the equaliser, so we were back on top and looking for a winner. Uh, we play the ball down the right this time through Sakamoto. He comes inside and drags a host of players with him, lays it off to Sheaf in space, plays a lovely reverse pass to Sims, shoots and his shot is parried by Gunn. But Eccle swings in another corner and it's that connection once again. There's a bit of luck to it, but we don't care. Eccles to Hadji, 3-2 to Coventry and what a game this is. But... Time to focus up now, this game isn't over and we don't want a repeat of the Borough game. Norwich get forward again and it just squeezes past the post and we would hang on. So there we have it, it's a 3-2 win, 
brilliant result for Coventry and that would push us up to third in the table as I'll show you in a moment. Um, but one thing that I am going to do, um, I am going to keep a tally of how many uh, corner goals that we score from this point on. Um, and I'll bring up a little graphic to go with it each time we score from a corner, so that should be quite fun as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully as well, um, the fixtures will start to get a little bit easier. That would be nice. Um, but that's going to do it for another episode of Realistic Career Mode on Pete's Dugout. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon on the next one. Bye-bye.